In the last video, we introduced composite beams made of steel rolled sections and concrete slabs. We also discussed how the concrete slab can be converted to equivalent thickness of steel to use the homogeneous section equations. In this video, we will discuss how to find the neutral axis, in addition to how to calculate the stresses in the steel as well as in the concrete and how to determine the composite section's flexural strength. We will also explore how to determine the width of the concrete slab that will contribute to the composite member. Let's consider a composite beam consisting of a W16 by 36 A992 steel section topped with an 87 inch wide and a 5 inch thick concrete slab. The concrete strength is 4 KSI. We will determine the maximum stresses in the steel and concrete resulting from a positive bending moment of 160 foot kips. Let's start by calculating the elastic modulus of concrete where WC is the unit weight of the concrete. The ratio of the elastic modulus of steel to that of the concrete is required to calculate the equivalent steel width to replace the concrete. Since the modulus of elasticity of concrete can only be approximated by the used equation, the usual practice of rounding n to the nearest whole number is sufficiently accurate. The width of the steel section replacing the concrete would then become the width of the concrete slab divided by the ratio of elastic moduli. The position of the neutral axis is initially unknown. As a starting location, we guess it to be below the top of the steel, where yt is the distance to the top of the steel from the neutral axis, yb is the distance to the bottom of the steel from the neutral axis, y bar is the distance to the top of the concrete from the neutral axis. The height of the beam is known and can be obtained from Table 1-1 of the AISC Construction Manual. The location of the neutral axis can be found by applying the principle of moments, with the axis of moments at the top of the slab. The location of the neutral axis from the top would then be the sum of the product of areas and the distance of their center divided by the sum of the areas. Let us put the calculations in a table to make it easier. For the concrete, the area is 5 inches multiplied by 10.88 inches and its center is 2.5 inches away from the reference axis. The W section has an area of 10.6 square inches and its center is 12.95 inches away from the reference axis. This means that the distance of the neutral axis from the top of the concrete is 4.205 inches, which is above the top of the steel. The moment of inertia of the section about the neutral axis is then calculated as follows, where the moment of inertia of a rectangular area is the width times the height cubed divided by 12, and the moment of inertia of the W section is taken from Table 1-1 and d is the distance of the centers of the areas to the neutral axis. We then obtain the moment of inertia of the section using the parallel axis theorem as 1530.4 inches to the power of 4. We can then use the moment equations to find the stress at the top of the steel, the bottom of the steel, and the top of the concrete. Because everything below the neutral axis in a positive applied bending moment will be in tension, the top of the steel will be in tension. Of course, so will the stress at the bottom of the steel. As for the stress at the top of the concrete, that will be in compression. The concrete is assumed to carry no tensile strength, however. This means that the concrete below the neutral axis should be discounted. The geometry of the transformed section will then be different from what was originally assumed. To obtain an accurate result, the location of the neutral axis should be recomputed on the basis of this new geometry. Using the table again to compute the location of the neutral axis, we can solve the equation for y bar and this gives us a new neutral axis location that is 4.143 inches away from the top of the concrete. The moment of inertia is then revised as follows. This gives us the following revised stresses, which when compared to the previously obtained stresses, 
the difference between the two analyses is negligible, so the refinement in locating the neutral axis is not necessary. To find the maximum bending moment the composite section can handle, we assume that the nominal flexural strength will be reached when the entire steel cross-section yields and the concrete crushes in compression. If the steel section has compact webs, when a composite beam has reached the plastic limit state, the stresses will be distributed in one of three ways. The first is with the neutral axis in the concrete slab, corresponding to full tensile yielding of the steel and partial compression of the concrete. The concrete stress is shown as a uniform compressive stress of 0.85 times the concrete compressive strength. The tensile strength of concrete is small and is discounted. The second is with the neutral axis in the steel top flange. The concrete stress block extends the full depth of the slab. Part of the flange will therefore be in compression to augment the compressive force in the slab. The third possibility is with the neutral axis in the web. In each case we can find the nominal moment capacity by computing the moment of the couple formed by the compressive and tensile resultants. This can be accomplished by summing the moments of the resultants about any convenient point. Because of the connection of the steel shape to the concrete slab, lateral torsional buckling is no problem once the concrete has cured and composite action has been achieved. To learn more about lateral torsional buckling and all the possible ways a steel beam can fail, please click on the video at the top or the link in the description below. To determine which of the three cases will happen, compute the compressive resultant as the smallest of the following. Where A sub S is the cross-sectional area of the steel shape, A sub C is the area of the concrete, and sum of Q sub N is the total shear strength of the stud anchors. Each possibility represents a horizontal shear force at the interface between the steel and the concrete. When the first possibility controls, the neutral axis will be in the concrete slab. When the second possibility controls, the neutral axis will either be in the steel flange or steel web. The third case governs only when there are fewer studs than required for full composite behavior, resulting in partial composite behavior. We are going to show an example of a fully composite member in this video. Let's consider the same previous beam. We will compute the available strength of the composite beam, assuming that sufficient stud anchors are provided for full composite behavior. To start, we will determine the compressive force C in the concrete, which will be the smaller of the following two cases. The steel strength is smaller and therefore will control. This means that the full depth of the slab is not needed to develop the required compression force. The stress distribution will be as shown here. The resultant compressive force can also be expressed as follows. The equation can be rearranged to solve for the concrete depth in compression A. The force C will be located at the centroid of the compressive area at a depth of A over 2 from the top of the slab. The resultant tensile force T, which is equal to C, will be located at the centroid of the steel area. The moment arm of the couple formed by C and T is equal to 12.05 inches. The nominal strength is the moment of the couple, and for LRFD design, the design flexural strength will be 0.9 multiplied by the moment of the couple, which gives 479 foot kips. Finally, we will discuss how to find the effective slab width that will be a part of the composite section. AISC I3.1A requires that the effective width of the floor slab on each side of the beam centerline be taken as the smallest of 1 8 of the span length or 1 half of the distance to the centerline of the adjacent beam or the distance from the beam center line to the edge of the slab if the beam is an edge beam. Don't forget to like and subscribe and turn on the notification bell. Thank you for watching.